hope my mood. Um, I must apologize for not being on camera. For some reason, I'm having issues. So you can't get to see me wearing my uh, amazing Avalara orange t-shirt, but uh, we will continue nonetheless. Um, so yeah, a bit about myself. So uh, as um, Ryan mentioned, I'm a strategic alliance manager here at Tavalara. Uh, so my main focus is to work with strategic partners such as Brightbridge. Um, I've worked in the business management software industry for over five, 15 years, sorry, including five years at NetSuite. So it's fair to say that I do know the uh, NetSuite ecosystem quite well. Uh, and I'm joined by my colleague, Reese. Uh, Reese, do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Yeah, of course. Thanks, Tarek. Hi, everybody. My name's Reese. Um, so I lead our solution consultancy team here at Avalara um, in the EMEA region. So the, my main focus is really to support the likes of Tarek, um, our, our business development, our partner team, but also our sales teams on all things um, Avalara solutions. Um, just a bit of background about myself. I've been at Avalara for about two and a half years now. Uh, previous to that, I was with KPMG um, and working in indirect tax technology, focusing really on VAT reporting, tax engine and, and e invoicing as well. Um, nice to meet everybody. Back to you, Tarek. Cheers. Thanks, Rhys. Cool. So the agenda we'll go through today. So we've already uh, done introductions. I'll uh, provide a few slides quickly uh, to provide an overview of, of Avalara. Then I'll hand over to Rhys uh, to provide the high level demo and then we'll wrap up uh, with Q&A at the end. Uh, and as Ryan mentioned, you know, if you have any questions throughout, please do ask in the chat and uh, we'll look to cover them off at the end. So uh, a bit about um, Avalara in terms of you know, who we are. So we provide end-to-end -end, uh, tax compliance solutions. Uh, we are um, we, we were around to help operations, uh, businesses with operations in multiple countries to help uh, with their indirect tax compliance. Uh, I won't go through all the, the um, solutions on this slide, um, I'll touch on a few of them and then obviously if you have any uh, questions or like to learn more about any of them, then please do get in contact. Um, so, you know, if you're expanding into new countries or regions where you need to register for VAT, GST or, or US uh, sales tax, then we can help facilitate that registrations process. Um, if you have operations in the US uh, and need to calculate um, a sales tax uh, on transactions, then we have a powerful tax engine called Avatax. Uh, for those of you unaware why this is important, uh, in the US uh, there's over 13,000 different tax jurisdictions, so it is incredibly complicated to try and calculate the correct uh, tax value on transactions. Um, but the tax engine over the years has developed uh, to be a global tax engine, so it is capable, capable of also calculating the more complicated VAT and GST transactions. Um, it's also capable of, of automating the customs duties calculations for cross-border transactions. So if uh, you're based in the UK but shipping products, for example, to US or EU, we can automatically calculate the customs duties and also um, ensure that the correct tariff codes or HS codes are, are uh, um, applied to the uh, products you're shipping cross-border. Uh, E-invoicing is becoming a very hot topic this other pond, so we have a powerful invoicing solution, so we integrate into NetSuite or any other solution that we need to. Uh, we'll extract the uh, invoice information uh, out of NetSuite for, for all countries, which is a one-time mapping. We'll convert the uh, invoice information into a standardized template. Uh, and then what we do in our tools, we'll convert that standardized template into the appropriate template for all the different countries that have e-invoicing mandates. Uh, and then VAT reporting, which is obviously why we're here today. So we will talk more about VAT reporting during this, uh, during this session. So a bit about us, about us in numbers. So we were founded in 2004, and we were founded to help businesses uh, navigate around the complexities of, of US sales tax, hence why uh, Avatax uh, was born. Um, over the years, uh, we've grown to become a, a global company. So as you can see on the screen, we, we have over 4,000 employees working across 17 locations globally. So as a global company ourselves, you know, we're in a prime position to help our global customers uh, achieve compliance uh, reduce risk uh, and streamline their, their tax automation processes using our cloud-based uh, solutions. 
Um, and you know, we work with over 30,000 customers across a, a multitude of industries spanning over 95 countries. So I'm sure there'll be a, a number of brands uh, that you recognize uh, on this screen. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of you will recognize this brand, uh, Oracle NetSuite. And talking of NetSuite, you know, we were proud to be voted as the Sweet Cloud uh, Partner of, of the Year uh, last year. Um, so you know, we really do have uh, powerful solutions uh, for, for NetSuite customers. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to quickly touch on this slide. I'm not going to explain what VAT is. I'm sure everyone on this on this call understands what VAT is, but I'd like to just touch on this slide because it does illustrate the complexities of, of VAT. You know, VAT is collected at all stages of the process uh, and reported by the VAT payer to the uh, appropriate tax authorities. Uh, businesses collect VAT, they pay VAT, uh, and then every country uh, has their own um, local VAT laws and legislation. Um, but to be, you know, VAT compliant, uh, it's fair to say there are some common factors across the different countries that businesses need to adhere to, and you know, some of those factors could be uh, businesses need to file and pay periodic uh, VAT returns on time. Uh, they have to file correct and complete VAT returns, uh, and they have to uh, comply with the local uh, VAT legislation. Uh, and then, you know, changes are occurring. They, they, a lot of changes occurred over the previous years, and, and changes will continue to uh, occur uh, this year and, and in future years. I mean, for example, last year we saw a number of changes. You know, MTD, Making Tax Digital, came into effect uh, in the UK. Italy abolished its Estra Metro filing and expanded its SDI digital reporting. Uh, France introduced a major change with how import VAT is assessed. So, you know, a number of changes, uh, as I say, have occurred and, and will continue to occur. So businesses really need to be aware and wary of these changes and prepared uh, for these changes. Uh, and talking about pre uh, prepared and understanding of upcoming changes, so we have a, a VAT Live uh, page, uh, which is avalar.com forward slash VAT Live. So if you're interested in learning about upcoming mandates or changes or anything VAT related, uh, then this is a, a, a good uh, page uh, for you to bookmark. Um, so that's enough of me for now. I will uh, hand over to Rhys. Thanks, Tarek. So let me just share my screen. Um, so what I'm going to do now is talk you through our VAT reporting solution. Um, it is, if you think about what exactly it is, it's a solution uh, to, to kind of standardize and streamline your VAT reporting processes. Essentially, you can upload all of your transactional data, your sales and purchase data. And the, the main focus of this is to then consolidate and create your VAT returns in the countries in scope. So your terms will be pre-populated based on the, the mappings, et cetera, and then they're ready to file to the authorities. So just to kind of talk through this in a bit more detail on how this works. So I've got a couple of slides that I'll talk you through um, and then I'll go into the solution to show you some of the screens and actually from a user standpoint, how you can actually use that tool and the look and feel of it as well. So on the left hand side will be source system or systems. Um, we, we can um, upload data from multiple uh, sources, um, but for example, this could be NetSuite and we'd pull all of the transactional data from that system. So that's talking about your sales and your purchase data. There may be some other kind of financial data that, that needs to be added into your return, but really any transaction that you need to report. So there's a number of ways to get that data out. So we can consume that data manually by uploading that data uh, into the tool, or we have APIs as well to, to automate the process of, of bringing that data in. Um, a lot of systems do this on a monthly basis. We can actually do this on uh, as frequent basis as, as you would like. So we could actually upload data on a daily basis to make use of the tool to be able to log in and check your data. You then have time to actually go back into, into NetSuite or other source systems um, to then make your corrections. But once the data is consumed into the solution, it's not just a VAT reporting tool. We do also have um, some data analytics embedded into the tool. We actually run 160 plus checks on every single line of data that comes into the solution. Um, those checks kind of range from financial checks to, to more master data gaps as well. Um, 
And if there is an issue with the data, um, we do still allow the, the data to come into the tool, um, but we'll actually just park those those error transactions into an error log um, for corrections to be made um, either within the tool or you could go again back to the source system and then delete it uh, in back reporting. So I'll show you a couple of those examples in the solution. Within that, where checks or where checks have come up with errors, um, as I said, you can make and edit transactions within the tool. There is a full audit trail. So if you're thinking from a UK MTD standpoint, making text digital, where you need to have digital links and, and, and kind of an audit throughout your VAT return, we do provide that. Um, and we actually are an approved software for UK making text digital. There's also the option to add manual adjustments uh, to the actual VAT return directly as well. Again, with an audit trial, and you can upload attachments and add comments to those adjustments um, to back that up as well. We then have a, another nice feature, um, the VAT general ledger reconciliation. So this actually allows you to bring in your, your financial data, your accounting data for your VAT um, general ledger entries in your source system and we actually do a reconciliation between every single entry for accounting purposes against your VAT return. So essentially are we, we're checking everything that you've accounted for in your in your source system. Can we find that in a VAT return? If we can't, for some reason you may have accounted for something, but it hasn't actually been pulled into Avalar VAT reporting. We would flag that as a gap um, because potentially you're not going to be filing something that you should be. We also do the reconciliation the other way around. So we check everything on your VAT return. Have you actually accounted for that in your VAT general ledger account in your source system? Again, for some reason, you may be reporting something on your VAT return, but you haven't actually accounted for that in NetSuite. So we do both those checks. It's an automated and very quick reconciliation process. Um, and then we'll give you the results back uh, for you to make those corrections. It really is, and a lot of this system is really moving away from those Excel formulas and, and manual lookups um, to automating the process. And then finally, and this actually happens at the start, but the, the reason we put this at the end is because anything that you make changes to along this process will amend this return, but your VAT returns will be automatically created. We do have other reports in here like interest at NEC sales, and they'll also be automatically created as well. Um, and they are then ready to file. We do have a couple of options um, for the, the, the filing process. So this is um, obviously a solution to create your returns and populate them. For some countries, we do have direct filing. So you can actually just click a button in the tool and the, the VAT return will be submitted directly. For others where the tax authorities do not allow direct filing, we have file format filings. What that essentially means is you can download the XML version or the TXT version, whatever the official format is in that country, you can download that and then you can upload that onto the authorities portal. And then for every single country within the tool, we also create the PDF return in local language and in English as well. So if you're Doing a return in Germany, for example, and you don't speak German, you can see that return in English. A couple of things on the bottom, um, AWS hosted Amazon Web Servers, so we, we've, we've got all the security uh, as of the AWS, which is great. Um, there's options to add dashboards onto there as well to, to kind of give you more insights into your data. Um, and the last one on the right hand side is we do actually have a connection to the EUV's VAT number checker website. Um, as part of the EC sales listings, we can do bulk checks on every single VAT number um, that's being used as part of that EC sales listing. So I hope that gives everybody a good overview of how the tool works. Um, just to show you some of the country coverage first, and then I'll jump into the tool to give you a bit of a demo. Um, as I say, we, we, we support 62 countries within the tool. Um, and as part of that, we do actually support the, the VAT returns or GST returns for all of those countries. We also have the EC sales listings and interest at across the EU, so the 27 EU member states plus Northern Ireland. Um, we, we support the Spanish SII, so that's the live reporting requirements where you need to file your transactional data every four days. We will consume that information and will automatically send that to the authorities via VAT reporting. And we do have um, 
some other control statements um, and other reports as well within the tool, more country specific. In particular, Poland, the new JPK um, VAT return, as well as Norway, the SAFTI return that was that replaced the old VAT return last year. Just a snapshot of the country coverage. Um, I'm not going to list every name, every single country on there, but just to give you a bit of an insight that it's not just the EU that we support. We do support countries um, all over the world. And these are some of the other key reports um, outside of what I've mentioned today. OK, um, I hope that's given everybody a good overview. Um, please do remember that we do have um, the, the chat. So if there are any questions, please put it in there and we will have some time at the end of the, the call to talk through them. Um, but as I go through this, yeah, just any questions, please put it in there and I'll try and pick them up either during it or at the end of the, uh, the chat. OK, this is the VAT reporting tool. So I've already logged into this. Um, the great thing about this is it's a cloud based tool, as I said, on AWS. Um, we've moved away from we still do have an on premise version, but we're, we're really moving away from that and, and putting everything onto the cloud it makes it far easier for users to log in. Um, they don't need to kind of make changes all the time um, when, when there are content changes. And I'll talk about that in a second. It's automatically applied to the system. You don't have to kind of have patches that you need to download and put into your own databases um, with content. We do have a content team. Um, that's our main uh, IP. It's it's it's, it's, it's kind of goes across all of the the technologies that we have for for tax and indirect tax. Um, and their main focus is to make sure that we are fully aligned with the latest content, the, the latest legislation, the latest law. So any changes that are made um, to in the fact reporting world, it could be changes to the formats of the returns. It could be changes to how transactions should be reported we will make all of that change behind the scenes so you don't need to worry about working out where a certain transaction needs to be added into the the german return or the the israeli return um, we will have that all kind of updated behind the scenes just to give you a bit of a whistle tour of this um and then i'll go through really how a user would actually use this solution on their day-to-day -day, uh, day -day workings. We have kind of five key areas. So we have returns. This is where you can see all of the open returns. There's lots of filters in here um, and you can actually filter on a user as well. So you only would see your, your countries and companies. Within here, you can see your open returns, but also we do store any return that has been filed. We will store that in the closed returns and that's all aligned with the archiving requirements per country as well. We then have the errors and warnings section. This is where you can log in and see any particular errors or warnings. I've only got errors selected at the moment, but we also have warnings here as well um, by exception. So if you don't see anything in here, that's great news. If you do, you've potentially got an issue, but you can rectify that within the system. So I'll talk you through that in a second. With transactions, this is where you can import data manually. As I said before, drag and drop. We've got templates here. Um, but if you wanted to use and what most of our customers do use is our API endpoint and that just automates the process. You don't need to do anything. You're just every day or every week or every month you'd log in and you'd see all of the transactions that have come through um, from that upload. So I'll talk you through how to kind of look at that data in a second as well. We have some ad hoc reports in here. If you go into transaction reports, there's some other reports that you can run on an ad hoc basis if you wish. And the last piece is the settings. And this is really the brains behind all of the, the, the tool um, from a front end standpoint. Um, this will be part of the implementation. So you wouldn't need to worry about this. Um, we would get this all set up for you or your um, implementation partner would. Um, but we would make sure that your companies are structured in the right way. We've got your VAT codes mapped to our Avalara codes. Um, exchange rates could be set up fat groups if you have them we can set those up as well and in account settings we can tweak lots of settings we can turn things on or off as well um, with everything you can set users um, within your organization as administration users so if you wanted to in the future tweak any of this then they do have the ability to do that but if you do only want certain users we have the the roles and the permissions to, to kind of turn them on or off as well Okay, um, 
very quickly, I'm not going to go into too much detail on settings, but just to show you, you can add all your companies in here. So you can see that we've got a list of companies, company codes that will be aligned to your NetSuite company code. Um, and then you can also see your VAT numbers on the right hand side as well. Um, so you can. You can view people's VAT numbers in here. So this this particular company only has a UK VAT number. Um, if I go to my company, Reese Limited, which I'm going to talk you through today, you can see that they have a whole host of VAT numbers assigned to that company. So we will get that company structure set up for you. Within here as well, you have your VAT codes. This is essentially how the system understands all of your transactions that have come through from NetSuite. What do they actually mean? Um, so we'll be mapping your unique VAT code to an Avalara code. And that will then drive the correct reporting. And as you can see in here, there's all the settings of this code. It's been mapped to um, uh, an Avalara code. And then I can simulate that and you can see exactly where this transaction will be um, reported in. So every time any code comes through from A1 or your own code, we know it's going into the VAT return into box six and box one of the UK return. And any credits will be applied um, as a negative. So that's how the system understands where the transactions will go to. Um, OK, enough of settings. Let's go into the, the kind of user process. So the first part would be uploading your data. As I say, you can import it here. You can drag and drop. I've already uploaded some data this morning um, and I've just got some UK data for now. Um, if we have time at the end, I can show you another country as well. Um, but within here, you can see that I had 75 transactions being pulled through from my source system. 69 of those have actually gone into my VAT return, but I have six that have gone into an error status. These are all hyperlinks, which is great. So you can click through and you can see all of my invoices now in a much more standard format. Um, these will be aligned to exactly what's in, in NetSuite, what's been pulled through. But I can click through into any of these that are on in an error status and I can actually drill into that and see what's making that invoice number. So I can see my supplier and my customer data, document values. I can see the VAT code and what that actually means. And at the bottom, you also have exactly where this is being reported. So this is being reported into box six and box one of my VAT return. You also have the ability to add attachments, which is great. And also add comments in here as well. So you may want, if there's any high risk transactions, you may want to add additional attachments or add comments just to kind of back up in, in case of a potential audit. You can also make actions on this. You can delete things, you can force things to error. Everything that you do, there will be an audit trail within here as well. So if we go back to the process documents, as I said, there are six transactions that have actually gone into an error status. So that's the next part, what the user would be spending their time on. So instead of having to do kind of spot checks and and spend a lot of time in NetSuite trying to work out whether something's incorrect or correct, we are doing that thing for you. We're going to give you the results for you then to concentrate on those particular errors. So if I go to the errors and warning screen, I can see for my company, Reese Limited, which is 1010, the company code, I have those six errors now showing. So just to give you a couple of examples of the types of errors that we can see, um, for example, this one here is telling me that for an inch community transaction, you need two EU member states, um, VAT numbers. So, and these, this one here is telling me the number of transactions that have flagged that error. So I can view that. I can see this, it's invoice 11 in my dummy data. So I can actually click on the details and what you'll see behind this is the information of this transaction. So I can see that this is a UK supplier, which is my VAT number. I can see it's been sold to a Norwegian business with a Norwegian VAT number. But I can see that someone has used a VAT code. This is my own code. This stands for GB as the UK, S for Sal, I for an inch community supplier, 000 as a zero rated transaction, and a C is a commodity trade. So someone's incorrectly used this which is an intra-community supplier for a export from the UK. In this case, the VAT amount is correct. It's zero, so that's fine, but it should actually be applied as an export. So you actually have the ability to go in and recode this because someone has coded this wrong 
And what it's trying to do is push it to a, a, a box that doesn't exist in the UK. So I'm now going to change that to export. And I can then save and reprocess that document. And what you'll see is my errors have now been reduced to five. So that very quick change, just to recode it, has, has, has worked very well. Other examples, um, this could be where the VAT amount that's been calculated in the source system doesn't actually match what we expected it to. So we're not actually doing any calculation in here. Um, that's all done in our Avatax tool, but we will be calculating behind the scenes just to kind of cross check what, what's come through and give you that, that error. So within here, we expected 20%. Um, if I click on the details again, you see it's a UK to UK supply. Um, it's got a, this is my VAT code. So it's telling me that the 200 and L is for local and it's a 20%. But as you can see here, the VAT amount is only 10 of a net of 100. So someone's calculated it's at 10%. This sort of example, um, there could be a valid reason for it. It could be a mixed supply. Uh, maybe someone coded it wrong, but you'd go back to your source system. You'd probably check to see if this invoice has actually been sent to your customer. If it has, you actually want this to be in your VAT return because you then want to raise a credit note and a new invoice with the correct percentage and also include those in your VAT return. So in that case, you wouldn't want to make any changes. But what I will do is select this and disable that VAT error check. I'd also probably add a comment in there to say that a credit note has been raised with a new invoice. There are just a couple of examples um, of, of kind of errors that, that we can see. Um, I won't go into too many more, but just to show you this, this is one where maybe it's a VAT code that's been used that hasn't been mapped. So Avalara doesn't understand that. You could actually go in and, and map that code and then reprocess this document. So that's one option. Um, or you could just change the VAT code if someone's um, uh, someone in, has incorrectly created the wrong VAT code. We also have um, other types. So this is a the the Interstat code for for Northern Ireland. Someone's used eleven. I think it's thirteen. You may need to use in Northern Ireland. So we've got some checks on master data as well. So there's lots of ability to to kind of really review your data um, and. I do imagine the first few times you use this, you'll come up with quite a lot of errors because you just wasn't aware of, of these checks. Over time, you'd probably fix them back in, in NetSuite um, and the errors you'll start to see will reduce. Just to show you the warnings as well. So these are actually um, potential issues again with master data, but we're not gonna stop them from going into the VAT return, but you can correct them. So these, I've got quite a lot in here, mainly around my VAT numbers that I've used just because um, I've used dummy data, so they're not in the right format, for example. Um, but you do have the ability to upgrade those to an error, and then you can make a change. Okay, um, so I've uploaded data. We've checked the errors and warnings. I've made a couple of corrections. Um, the next step would be to, to run some ad hoc reports. So this is where you can go into the report section. There's This is a great report that you can run. This is the VAT code report. So this is where you can, um, you can view, if I go to the UK, for example, you can actually see all of your VAT codes or you probably refer to them as tax codes in your source system um, and how many times they've been used. So for example, if I know that this is a high risk code, I can go in there and I can see all of the transactions that have used that code. I can then filter on those, I can drill through, I can review them in detail, um, but it does give you the option, certainly in case of audits, again, they may say, I wanna see all of your, your exports or I wanna see all of your domestic transactions in a certain country. You can just type in that VAT code there and then you can see all of the transactions that have used that code for a certain period. Other types of reports that we run, we can, you, you can review all of your invoices, you can review all your interest stat lines, the changes log, which I mentioned before is important. This actually gives you the ability to see any changes that have been made. These are the two changes that I made during this demo. So the first one was that changing that old value, that old VAT code to this new value. So that has been flagged. I've also got a change by and a timestamp and also where that come from. 
I've also got this other one where invoice 17, I actually disabled that VAT rate check. So they've both been flagged and these can all be exported back into Excel if you need to. Also got a deletion log, very similar. Um, so this will show me, I'm not sure if I've deleted anything today, so I haven't. Um, but this will show you any transactions that have been deleted. There's also a reason code for deletion as well. Um, so everything is tracked within here. We then got the general ledger reconciliation. So this is what I mentioned before. Um, so if I go to your city's date where I've got some data in here. So this will show me some transactions within here um, that I've uploaded. This is from the general ledger side. So this is all my general ledger data. I can go down and I can click reconcile. And what this would do is it would do that very quick reconciliation. As I say, checking everything in your general ledger. Have we found it in your VAT return? So there's lots of data in here um, and you'd get a, a match if there is the data. Um, you'll get a no reconciliation if if it isn't if it isn't being matched. Um, and if it is matched, you will get a, a, an auto rec, which is great news. So very quick and easy to do that reconciliation. And then on the other side, you also have the ability to do the same. And this is actually checking everything in your VAT return. Can we find that in your general ledger reconciliation? Um, I've already run this one, but again, you've you've got the, the different matches there. Some have been auto wrecked. Some of of this is zero because there's no VAT, and then you've got some here that have got no reconciliation, um, and that's probably because someone's deleted the the general ledger data. Um, but this would be that it's been found in your VAT return, but for some reason it can't be found with all of the right information in your general ledger. That again can all be exported into Excel, so you can then take those no recs and, and work out exactly why they're, they're missing in your data. Okay, um, so just to recap again, um, I'll, I'll just kind of flag this back up so everyone's aware of where we are. We uploaded the data, we run the 160 plus checks, we've then done some edits and transactions, we've checked the VAT general ledger reconciliation, the last part then is to check the returns. So if I go into open returns, within here you can see it's auto, it remembers that I'm looking at April data, my company, I can flick through companies if I wish. Um, I'm checking the UK and also we have this due date status. Um, so I've still got 62 days to do this because it's actually just the, the April return. It's only just started, so I've got a lot of time to do it. But if you did have lots of returns in different countries, you can actually filter things on due soon. Or God forbid, if you've missed something, you may have missed something and it's, it's overdue. You can also check that as well. But you can click into this. What you will see is your return automatically created. So this is automatically created as soon as the data is uploaded into the tool. Those errors, those changes that I've made have made a correction to this information. Um, two ways to view this you can drill into the boxes so you can see in box six these are the transactions that make up box six i can then drill into that further and you can see that same screen i showed you before of all the information or you can actually view these transactions um, by sales or by purchases as well so you can filter in all of your sales you can filter all of your purchases and what you'd see is on the right hand side for each line where that's being filed in, in the different boxes of the return as well. You can add manual documents. So in the UK, you still can add manual uh, adjustments to the data. It could be something like bad debt relief, for example. Um, you go down here, you can start putting in some box values and start to actually make changes directly to um, the boxes. If I then maybe make a, a change to the VAT as well to box to box um, six and box one, so I can submit that. What that would do is a couple of things. The first thing is it will actually change the box values direct, which is what you expect. But also, again, for MTD purposes, you'll have this adjustment. It takes a couple of seconds. So let me just refresh it and it should be there. Okay, it's not coming up just yet. Um, but it does take a couple of seconds, but you'll have a brand new um, 
transaction that will be applied to this. If I go back into the actual return though, um, you'd see, I'm not sure why that's not coming up, but it would come through, so it's taken a bit of time, but that would apply to your um, box numbers, um, but then it will come back as a um, process document as well. And then you can add the attachments or the, the, the comments in there as well um, for you to, to then make any changes. The last part then is the filing. So for every country, as I said, you do have the ability to make, um, you can see the PDF in local language, and in this case, it's just English. Um, and within here, you can see the PDF return. So this is my data here. We have automatically applied the values per box. Um, obviously, this, the VAT 100 in the UK, you can no longer file, but just I think most people still like to see the official format of the return. You can print this, you can save this. Um, it's all kind of pre-created based on the data in the system. But for MTD, we do have the direct filing piece. So this is where you can click view filing. You can see the JSON that we're going to send to HMRC via the official process. If you ever needed to, I'm not sure why you would, but if you ever needed to kind of take that JSON and, and submit it via a different portal, you can. You can download that and that will just be applied um, on, your, on your own system. But for the UK, we will just click Submit Return. You'd get this final confirmation and then you click OK. If I actually had authentication to HMRC's portal, that would take me through. Um, I haven't actually got this because it's a demo account it's set up, so it says I'm not authorized, but that's how quick and easy it is to actually submit your return. Um, on top of that with MTD, you do have the ability to um, retrieve back three different pieces of information that actually comes back via the API to HMRC. So we'll get liabilities that are on your account, your payments on your account, but also the returns information as well. So that all comes back into this transaction report screen. So you can log in, you can select your VAT number um, and click apply. Again, I haven't got authentication, so I can't show any data here, but you would see anything on your account across these three. And anyone who's filed an MTD will be fully aware of these three different pieces of information. This can then be applied and be seen visibly within the VAT reporting tool as well. Once that's been filed, it will go into your closed returns um, and your UK return will be stored there as well. Um, just, just to spend the last two minutes, I'm just going to very quickly show you um, another country just to show you how this is actually a global solution and not just for the UK. So I do have some data, I think, for Germany in March. So I'll just log into that. So this shows you how you can change dates. You can you can select Germany in this case, and then you see the German uh, different returns that are within the tool. So within here, you can see now this is the same format. So this is where I was talking about at the start. It's a standardized and consistent approach to complete your global VAT returns. Um, you don't need to be an expert in Germany now to be able to, to complete this because you we have created and we've populated the return on your behalf based on all of the mappings. Um, you can drill into this, you can see what makes up each of those boxes. But at the bottom, um, you do have the the German processes for filing. So in this case, you can see the PDF in German or in English. So I can click on an English version of this return. You could see the official format of that German return here. And that's all being, as you can see, converted into English. But in Germany, we can also file directly um, via the Eric Elster portal. Uh, so you can click on Eric Elster submission, click view file in. And what you'd see is a slightly different format of data. Again, you can download that if you wish, but we can click submit return. You can put in your certificate pin, upload your certificate for the, the Eric Elster. And then magically you can click submit and that will then file that VAT return as well. Um, there are some other returns that you'd probably be expected to do in other countries as well, such as your interest stat. Um, so you can see that we do also create your interest stat filing with all the information. Lots of checks on this data as well, because what we're sending, we need to make sure is valid um, and different ways to file those as well. Um, 
and then the EC sales listings, which is something that again will be required for the majority of EU countries if you're moving the selling goods to B2B to other EU member states. Um, we will automatically compile that EC sales listings based on your customers' VAT numbers. Um, and as I said as well, we do have direct connection to the VIA's website. So you can see that we've just very quickly run that check. We've got the response back. This is a valid VAT number. This is the company name of that VAT number. And this is the address as well. Um, and you have the ability for different ways to file those returns as well. OK, so hopefully that gives you a very good overview of the tool. I've gone through that quite quickly, um, but just to kind of recap again, just one more time on this slide. So we've talked through the upload of data, the checks, the edits, the manual adjustments. We run the VAT general ledger reconciliation. I've shown you the returns and then also I've shown you all three of these direct filing where you can click a button and directly submit it. You can download those file formats and you can then just take that and upload it onto the authorities' websites. And then the PDF returns, I've shown you that German example where we convert that into English as well. Um, I've spoken through the MTD approved software. Um, we are accredited. You can look on HMRC's website. You can see Avalara's name on there. We've got the VAT VIA's website checker as well as part of the EC sales listings. And um, the final piece is what I've mentioned, but just to re-emphasize how important it is, the global content, we will maintain that. That's our responsibility to maintain all of the countries that we support to keep it up to date in, in, in line with the, the local laws as well. Um, I think that's everything from my side. Tarek, I'm not sure if there's anything else to add on, on, on yours. If not, I think Ryan was going to open up the floor to some to some questions. Yeah, nothing more from me, um, unless there's obviously any questions for me to answer. But yeah, hand back to Ryan. Perfect. Well, thanks, everybody, for the questions that have come in. Uh, if you have any more, feel free to either message me directly or put them straight in the chat. Uh, so the first question we have is, would I need a separate implementation when bringing on new countries? Sorry, should I take that one? Yes, um, please, yeah. yeah, yeah. OK, so the way this works is, is it's a kind of single implementation in terms of if you've got all your data. So in terms of this ingestion of data, actually, it's a good screen to show. Um, you can bring in single countries. You can bring in 60 different countries set of data because the data that we need is kind of required across all of the different reports so we would inform you of all the information that you require that will come through there are very small elements um, if you were to use this in phased approach to so say you was going to implement the uk germany and france first and then bring on the netherlands after as long as you bring in the same information that's needed from the Netherlands here, which is very likely, the only additional bits that you'd need to do if you wanted to bring on Netherlands at a later stage is to map the Dutch uh, VAT number in that settings that I showed you, which is a very quick process, and then also um, map any of the, the Dutch VAT codes or tax codes that you have in NetSuite. But once you've done that, add the data into your import um, and then you're good to go. Hope that answer that question. If there's if they're not, just let me know and we can talk about it further. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, so next question is can Avalara also support the new e invoicing mandates like Italy SDI? Yes, yeah, so as Tarek mentioned before, that is part of our product uh landscape. So we do support e invoicing. Um it's not part of this solution um at the moment. We have our e-invoicing solution, which is very similar to this as a single API, which can consume all the information. It's actually in what we call UBL 2.1, which is universal business language, single data that comes through, and then we can start to meet all the different mandates for e-invoicing. The, the, the overall vision though of Avalara and the future vision is to have the VAT reporting tool, our e-invoicing tool, and our tax determination tool. If I go back to that slide, all talking together um so that's the, the 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 main vision of the company and that's something that we're striving towards as well that's a very interesting question is this one, actually anything included to support slash calculate e triangulation 
Yeah, so the trying the triangulation piece actually sits within Avatax. Um, so that's where we actually can calculate triangulation. Um, there's obviously certain attributes that you would need to be able to calculate that, like the middleman's VAT number, for example. Uh, but we can calculate that within Avatax. For the returns, what I was showing you today, um, there's specific codes on on what part of the party you are for triangulation, because I know in some countries you do need to um, you do need to report those separately and for interest at EC sales sometimes you need to state if your minimum VAT number as well but yeah we can support that. Um, there's also a question around uh, Avatax uh, so can you provide a brief summary of how Avatax works uh, specifically within a US environment? Yep of, of course um, so the Avatax solution itself is um, Again, there's a couple of options to integrate. Very simply, um, Avatax will connect to any sort system. We have pre-built connectors. We actually have pre-built connectors for NetSuite. Um, and we have that for the US and for the EU as well. It's actually a single connector for NetSuite One World. Um, you'll be, every time you trigger a transaction in NetSuite, it will trigger a call to Avatax based on the information that comes through. We will run a lot of checks. Uh, there's there's literal rules that we do, but it's all done instantaneously. Um, and then we'll come back with the correct place of supplier, the correct VAT treatment for that that product or service that that is selling, and then we'll send back that that information, the results, the tax treatment, the rate, the rates, um, the tax amount that needs to be applied back into the source system. For the US, we'll kind of bring back how many levels of tax that they have. It could be city, county, state level, um, for VAT purposes, we'll send back the correct VAT rate and amount, but also invoice messaging if required. And that VAT code that I showed you in that tool, we actually have pre-built ones. So if you was used to use Avatax and reporting, you don't need to do any of that mapping because we already know the code that comes back from the engine. Interesting. Um... Final question is, we are increasing our sales into the EU. Can you please provide advice as to the best way to set up a tax entity in the EU? So, sorry, could you repeat that again, Ryan, just so I'm so, clear on the uh, we question? We are increasing our sales into the EU. Yep. Um, can you please provide advice as to the best way to set up a tax entity in the EU? Okay, so we're not, unfortunately, we're not tax advisors. We can't actually... Uh, <laughs> give out tax advice um, to businesses. But there's, I think from a just more general standpoint, there's a variety of ways that you can do this. I think from a VAT standpoint, you can look if you need to have VAT numbers in particular countries. Um, there's certain thresholds that if you're actually established in those countries, you need to meet to become VAT registered. There's also the one-stop shop and the import one-stop shop, which is something to probably look at as well, um, because that's actually a single VAT um, number and registration that you can use for all of your EU countries. There are pending rules around that, just to caveat that, um, but that actually simplifies the process a lot. Um, so you only need to do one VAT return. You still need to um, calculate the correct VAT rates in each country. Um, but you can collect that then and put that onto one VAT return as well. So I'm not sure if that totally answers your question. Um, I hope that has been helpful. Perfect. Uh, that wraps up um, the webinar for today. Uh, thanks everyone for taking the time to attend. Uh, if you have any further questions or would like a bit more of a bespoke demonstration, uh, please email me at ryan.harris at brightbridgesolutions.com and we can arrange this for you. Uh, thanks again for attending today and look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Hope. Cheers.